Hi, right, good morning everybody. I'm so sorry. Earlier itself when we do the MAO, I did not press the record button. <laughs> so the whole 35 minutes wasn't recorded down. But never mind, I will just do a quick recap and summary of what I just said earlier itself. Alright, so today is the 10th December 2020, Thursday. This is a trade with the boys daily MAO. Alright, of course, uh, you need to do the disclaimer but because it's a recorded video now, you don't need to do that. Okay, now what happened is this, last night the Dow Jones then came down. It went to 30,300 and that was where I tell my student to sell the market. And apparently at that pinpoint I called for a sell, the Dow came down all the way. It was absolutely incredible. And of course, uh, end of the day, the Dow uh, basically did recover from 30,000. So what is the news that basically created a market downside? It's because there is some weighing on the prospect of the new physical stimulus package that may not be coming out as a store right now. Because Munchkin basically uh, is quite concerned uh, with this $916 billion stimulus package. But of course, in my opinion, eventually it will still come out, uh, put it this way. Let's be honest here. And of course, the reason because tech shares came off quite strongly and Apple was one of the worst performing, performing, uh, worst performing Dow component. Now, do note itself for Apple, right? This tells me something here. If the Apple movement is going to create a Dow Jones sell-off in a way because of the weightage, so I wonder on the 21st December when Tesla come on board itself, right? And we know Tesla in the earnings really is not there. If the Tesla share suddenly due to whatever reason plunge, right, the S&P 500 will be cracked, right? So that's why I'm pretty concerned from 21st November on the S&P 500, okay? So we can see from the Dow Jones chart yesterday, the Dow was above opening price, so that's why the Dow went above. When the Dow was above opening price and it's above um, pivot one, it's a buy, that's why the Dow went to 30,300. But when the Dow goes below 30,133, it becomes a sell signal. So to show you right live now, you can see over here, the Dow was just hovering strongly above the opening price. But once the Dow broke below the pivot one, that was the first round of selling. Now you realize this, when the market was coming down, the KSI was green. So that's why the buyers came back strongly, technical buyers come in very strongly. But the next wave, when the price goes up instead, this time round, you can see the market stays below the pivot one and also below the opening price. And you notice that even though the price went up, the KSI went down. So this tells you the boys are selling and they're not buying this time. So what happened when the price goes up, KSI goes down, it's always a good sell signal. And you can see the Dow plunge very fast, 200 points within like two hours. Okay, that is why I say our KSI indicator is definitely very different. Because conventionally, when price goes up, indicator go up, that's normal. But you can see that when price goes up, our indicator goes down. That's divergence. This tells you that something is very wrong. Okay? So, of course, when you talk about NASDAQ, I did mention you guys that if NASDAQ break below 12626 yesterday, the NASDAQ will sell and it really, really happened. It really, really happened. So, of course, NASDAQ came on all the way over here. And the recap of NASDAQ movement, you can see NASDAQ basically stays above, sorry, below the uh this uh, below the opening price throughout the whole day. Now, Nasdaq is supposed to be a very bullish counter, but yet for it to not go above KTR plus one is a very, very um, telltale sign that the market is weak yesterday, or at least there was some selling pressure. And when the market broke below the pivot two and below OP, no more. It's a sell at all costs. Remember, for our system, it's very simple. When the market stays below opening price and below pivot two, no matter what people tell you, overbought, uh, oversold, must buy, just tell them, say, no, you will sell. And indeed, this is how the market collapsed. And later on, we'll talk about gold, it'll be the same thing. All right, so that was what happened. So we do a recap of the um, my chart, the conventional chart. You can see that I take this point here, A and B, I connect them together, I extend it up. Beautifully, the market touched the trend line and pulls back. And of course, based on the tri conventional chart right now, you can see that the closing price is again below by triangle. So that means if today the Dow stays below the opening price, very good chance on conventional tells me that Dow may go down to 29739 today. All right, that is the conventional chart. On the 15 minute chart, it's all right, okay? This is the low, this is the high, I re rewired up. So now I will know that this is my 23.6 to watch out for. If the Dow can stay up, it may go back up again. If the Dow basically pulls back down, it will test my 38.2, 50, and 61.8. Now just a sharing on 61.8, the level is approximately 29.780. So if the market breaks below here, the selling will bring it all the way down to this point here. On the weekly chart itself, right, there's something interesting. This is the six week. And interestingly, there's two black candles. It's very similar to these two over here. This pattern here and this pattern here look eerily similar. So that's why I'm saying that traders be very careful from next week onwards. It's the six week that I mentioned. 
For the Nasdaq itself, yesterday when it broke down, it created a BNB formation, so traders will know what to do, right? So if the Nasdaq stays below the opening price, most likely it will test the MA30 and that's one, two, two, three, zero area, okay? One, two, two, three, zero area, all right? And for the Nasdaq for today, incredibly, look at the uh, long-term chart that I had from a long time ago. You can see beautifully, I connected this point to this point here and I extended off. Yesterday low was perfect. The way that the Nasdaq basically hit and reversed is there. So what I'm going to say this, if the Nasdaq breaks below the opening price, it will be a sell. It will be a sell. So with that understanding here, we look at the Dow Jones chart again for today from the PSV chart. You can see the Dow Jones chart today, if it basically goes below 30,020, Dow Jones can come down all the way to 29,909. All right, I repeat, if the Dow Jones... All right, if the Dow Jones uh, basically breaks below the opening price and below the pivot two, it will go down to 29,909. All right, so watch out for that particular level. And of course, there's a cash RL here. That is another form of a very concerning factor. All right, then for the NASDAQ, okay, a quick one on NASDAQ. NASDAQ today is a different story. Today, NASDAQ opening price already below the pivot two of 12649. So if NASDAQ breaks below OP, then the selling will come in. Now, how bad the selling can come down? Well, the first wave of selling, it should be coming down to at least here, and that's 12,164 uh, level. Watch out, 1,164 level. So that one, please watch out for that particular level there. All right, so that is the, um, the NASDAQ. And of course, uh, let's look at the gold. Now, of course, the question is what happened to gold yesterday? Now, yesterday I mentioned that if gold comes down, it will go to 1838 and really perfectly it really goes down down all right and that's not earlier during the zoom group chat okay earlier many people have made money on gold i'm so happy for them so now the thing is this the boys are saying that oh mount gold comes down is below ma50 ema50 he's telling that there's more direction more correction coming in you see these are all the bullshit the boys always do when it's going up itself they tell you a lot of stories and you jump in to buy and you got caught now it's coming down they tell you a lot of negative story and you believe in them you sell they buy back from you they make money again this is how the boys work there's no free lunch in the world all right there's no free lunch free lunch you just have to concentrate and do the right thing all right so apparently it's all right this is what happened to gold yesterday gold basically opens between pivot one and pivot two then once it broke below pivot two right below 1866 below op below pivot two is always a sell no matter what you tell me it's always a sell and the level i gave was at 1866 and then i realized and i give another level is 1838 i said that if gold come down it will go down to 1838 so i'm going to bring it live to you the, what did i said back then you can see on my telegram right now this is all my students and they know that i did say this 1838 level okay you can see that cal is so precise because that was a precise level that i gave right this is the chart that i draw yesterday i said that if gold breaks 162 because yesterday the low the, the yesterday level of 168 and when it break 1862, gold will go down to 1838. I give precise level. And of course, if you short the gold based on that, you will make easily $2,500 for per contract. Yes, $2,500 US dollar. That's $2,500 US dollar for one single contract. You can see that a lot of my students make good money yesterday. All right, you can see right here itself. And of course, my recap over there. So if let's say you missed this video and you want to you know, recap, uh, the only way is very simple. You just go online. You can go to my trade with the boys okay my videos are always there now every day about 2 to 3 p.m singapore time i'll upload the video all right and then um, if on facebook i'll update in the evening so if you guys want that don't you know, take note of that now of course uh, before that i forgot that i need to share this with you guys i to repeat this this is uh, today's coronavirus is very bad more than 3,000 cases of people pass on unfortunately let's pray for them and apparently this is something not healthy it's going to continue right i believe there might be a black swan coming up of in the market okay so of course i talk about nasdaq i talk about gold let's talk about bitcoin right let me talk about bitcoin now this is bitcoin now yesterday bitcoin came down that's why it going bitcoin came down all right it's unhealthy and i did mention this itself right a bitcoin comes down okay it will break down okay now thing is this for today bitcoin hear me out bitcoin today if it breaks below 18381 bitcoin can come down all the way to 17529 it can come down all the way to 17529 if bitcoin stay up then bitcoin can go back up all the way to as high 
(uh) as (uh) one eight seven nine two one eight seven nine two okay you heard me loud and clear alright on bitcoin okay so the thing is this I suspect that if bitcoin breaks below one eight thirty eight one bitcoin should be able to come here because today based on my PSP system it had closed below the KHSL for the first time and usually the market will go down to test the previous day low again so the previous day low yesterday was about one eight seven five zero so that's why I believe that if the market pulls later on there's a fairly good chance that go I mean sorry Bitcoin will go down to 17529 later, right? So that's Bitcoin for that itself. So with all this sharing here, okay. Sorry, I missed out crude oil. Crude oil is still forming a sideways direction, so nothing for you. Hang Seng, I mentioned Hang Seng. If it goes below the uh, MA 200, MA 30, there will be some selling in the market. There will be some selling in the market, and of course. Uh, why am I so bearish on gold a few days ago? Because I told you guys the market went below the MA, uh, this MA200 and MA30 is a very bearish signal. And of course, the tr the, tri the the technical pebble that I draw basically tells me that right, if the market cannot stay above the trend line, there will be some selling. So this is the reason why I say that. So with that all, all said, okay, just me jumble here and there. All right. So this is what happened. So FYI. Okay, is how gold came down. So I told you guys before, whenever the gold is below opening price and pivot to every CCYR will be a good sell. All right. Of course, yesterday you use KCX, you make some money. But if you look at the CCYR, if you sell on the yellow to red, you will make more money than actually buying gold. So that's why the trust on the system is very important. Below OP, below pivot to is always an important sell than a buy. All right. All right, so that is all for today. Do note, we have three days ago before we have my preview. More than 70 people have signed up for the preview. But in order to sign up for the preview to get a Zoom link, you need to go to tradetheboys.org slash webinar2020. I will be putting this uh, again on the Trade the Boys web page. I mean, sorry, Facebook page. Go there and sign up over there. Now, once do note, once come 1st of January, I will be charging at 1688 level, okay? Do note on that. And of course, to uh, end of the day beautifully you are never too old to set another goal or dream or new dream all right so guys go for it learn something else if the virus comes in if there's going to be a lot of shutdown you really need to have another set of tools to learn and do that because i'm very bullish in gold and very bullish in the bitcoin because i believe that next year if things goes bad Fair Reserve will pump in a lot of money. They won't mind. They don't care. And then the dollar will have a crisis. And of course, Bitcoin and gold will go up quite a fair bit. Okay, that's for next year. So you want to know exactly where my forecast is. Join my preview and go for my class. I will see you there. I'll tell you more from there. All right, this is Kel signing off. Take care. Have a great day. Bye-bye.